Come on, sleepyhead. You're meant to be helping me with the breakfast this morning. Do you work here? Are you a doctor? Uh, yeah. It's my baby. I couldn't sleep for worrying. He keeps crying, crying and choking. It's horrible and he won't stop. Oh. Well, um, he's quiet now. It comes and goes, but he ain't right. Well, uh, look, surgery doesn't start for another 25 minutes. But you're here now. What if he has another attack while we're waiting? You don't understand what it's like. Please, can, can you just look at him now? Go in. Don't tell me you found someone better to do this. No, I just wanted a quick word before you go in. Look, there's really no need to be nervous, you know. I'm not. I have absolutely no problem with talking with constables, sergeants or detective inspectors on a one-to-one -one basis. Yeah, but it's a bit different standing in a lecture theatre full of new recruits, isn't it? Well, it's just a chance to prove I'm not as green as you think I am. Jimmy, I've got no doubts about your abilities at all. Well, then why did you go to two police surgeons before coming to me? I just didn't think it was your thing. Well, it's going to be a chance to show you how wrong you are, isn't it? Oh, uh, you said you wanted the word. I'll tell you later. He's burning up, isn't he? It's meningitis, I know it is. That or something worse. Well, his temperature's a little high, but there's nothing to be too worried about. But you haven't seen him when he's having one of his attacks. He can't catch his breath. <laughs> you sure that's clean? Positive. How old are you, Gemma? Sixteen. And Ben's dad? Doesn't even know he exists. Are you trying to say I ain't a good mum? No, not at all. I'm just wondering who's around to help you. It's just me and Ben. You can tell me the truth. I can handle it. Well, the truth is, I can't seem to find anything wrong with him. But that don't mean he's not sick, though, does it? I mean, you've only seen him for five minutes. Yeah, but um, I see that you've brought him in here quite a few times and all the doctors who've examined him have given him a clean bill of health. But none of you see him every day. No, and you are the best person to tell if Ben's feeling a little bit under the weather. All I'm saying is that I can't find anything wrong with him this time. It's best not to take any chances with children, so my door's always open, yeah? You mean that? <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> it's not exactly a sellout, is it? Yeah, well, it's a lecture on the role of the police surgeon, not the latest Indiana Jones. Oh, don't tell me there's not going to be any popcorn. Oh, that's more like it. Jimmy, remember that word I wanted to have? Yeah, well, I'm just about to start. Yeah, it's important. Well, I'd have to wait until the break, if you could just get on with the introduction. Right. Thank you all for coming. I'm sure our speaker today needs a little introduction. He's that hard-working source of all medical knowledge, Dr Jimmy Clay. Thank you, Inspector. Um, hi, I'm Jimmy Clay, obviously, because Eva, um, D.A. Moore just said that. Um, over the next couple of hours, I'm going to introduce you to the vital work of the police surgeon. to know if Gemma Chankel's here. And I can't give you information about patients. So, she is here? I didn't say that. Which doctor is she with? Um, I'm Dr Bell. And you are? Marsha Townsend. All right, so you're not a relative then? No, but I'm the closest thing she's got to a parent at the moment. I'm the manager of the mother and baby unit. All right. So, what did she say was the matter with Benjamin this time? I really can't discuss that with you. Client confidentiality, I understand. However, am I right in thinking that Gemma was almost hysterical, yet you could find absolutely nothing the matter with the baby? Then you need to hear what I have to say. You better come through. So, to sum up, in my job, trust is everything. Uh, both the police staff and the general public need to have confidence in the total independence of the police surgeon. Any questions? I've got a question. Why don't we leave the question and answers till after the break? Uh, no, that's okay. Uh, let DS Halliday say. 
I'm just a little confused. I mean, you've told us what your duties are, taking medical evidence and making sure people are fit to be questioned, all that. Yeah. When you miss something out... What's that? You forgot to mention that you're also responsible for letting child abusers back on the street. Um, sorry, what? Billy Jenkins. Ring any bells? Fifteen years old and dragged into a camper van by a stranger. Yeah, okay, Jeff, that's enough. Well, I'm sure that's what Billy said to his attacker, but it didn't do him much good, did it? And now, thanks to Dr. Clay, Gareth Poole's gonna be out on the streets again. But I thought the court case was scheduled for next month. It was. But Billy's withdrawn his identification evidence. It was nearly a year ago and he still can't sleep or even leave the house. It's no wonder he didn't want to relive everything in a courtroom. But there must have been other evidence. Not enough for a conviction, well, that's what the CPS decided anyway. They're not going to proceed with the case. Which means that Gareth Poole is going to be free to prey on more innocent kids. And it's all your fault. So, how long has Gemma been with you? Since Benjamin was born. And how did she end up in care? The correct term is corporate parenting. Uh, there were various problems at home. The final straw was getting pregnant and having no idea who the father was. Well, she seems very devoted to her son. Oh, she is. But maybe she cares too much. Is that possible? Oh, Gemma's become obsessed. I mean, what kind of childhood is Benjamin going to have if he's never going to be allowed to play on a slide or splash in a puddle in case it's full of germs? When does genuine concern tip over into dangerous paranoia? I still don't know what you want from me. I want you to make an assessment of Gemma's mental health. Why? Well, I have to consider this. For his own protection, Benjamin might be better placed in another environment. So you're asking me to help separate mother and son? That's very much a last resort. No, I can't do that. You mean you won't do it? It's not my field. I'd have to refer Gemma to a child psychiatrist. So do that then. But I haven't seen anything in Gemma's behaviour to suggest that she's a danger to herself or to Ben. So you're happy to gamble the whole of Benjamin's future on what you saw during one, what, five-minute consultation? You and I have a professional duty of care to Gemma and Benjamin, and sometimes that means making difficult decisions. Yeah, but I can't base that decision on one meeting. I'd love to see Gemma again. Well, I look forward to your conclusions. Thank you, Doctor. Okay, but you're clearly not. Why didn't you warn me about the court case being abandoned? You must have known about it. It would have been on the station in minutes. Yeah, I tried to tell you, but then I saw how nervous you were. Oh, and now my confidence is sky high. Look, if I'd known Halliday was going to set you up, I'd have pulled the plug on the whole thing. Yeah, well, don't worry, just this Halliday's not going to get another chance to humiliate me. But you've got to go back in there. Oh, do you reckon? You know what this place is like? Rooms can ruin reputations. If you don't go back and stand up to him, you'll... Uh... <laughs> It's your choice, Jimmy. Found out what's wrong with Ben? Uh, no, um, just wanted a little chat. Why don't I just take Ben to the playroom? You won't take him near the other kids, though. There's all sorts of bugs going round. No, it's okay. I know all your little rules. He is my baby. I told you he'd run. Oh, I'm not going anywhere. I just don't think the planned lecture is suitable anymore. So, uh, let's talk about a real situation. Then maybe you'll all get an idea of the pressures a police surgeon is under. Dear Halliday, I mean, if this was your case, why didn't you come up here and help me? It's your funeral. I know it's supposed to be the most natural thing in the world. 
being able to play with the kids without worrying about every last thing. Has it always been like that? Since the day he was born. Wasn't there anyone around to give you any advice? Everyone wanted to interfere during the pregnancy. Don't drink, stop smoking, eat proper. But why didn't anyone warn me how tiny he was going to be? How vulnerable. Oh yes, everyone will tell you how wonderful it is to have a baby, but nothing can really prepare you for the reality. I'm all he's got. I'm nothing. Well, you're his mum. I'm a kid. Well, you're doing really well. I think you've just got to relax a bit and enjoy being a mum. Why don't you take Ben to the park this afternoon? Have you seen how many dogs there are there? They leave the dirt everywhere. It can make babies go blind. And the teeth, it only takes a second. Don't you read the papers? Dogs kill children all the time. Actually, that's very rare. It's just that those stories get big headlines. I am trying not to get stressed out. But you brought Ben in to see us this morning. That's because this time I know there's something wrong. Something really wrong with Ben. You've got to believe me. How's it been? Oh, fine. Oh. We're having a great time, aren't we? <laughs> so, what's the verdict? Um, well, I have to agree. She does seem to be oversensitive with mm. the concerns. Good. Thanks, Dr. Bell. But, um, I think it's understandable, considering the situation. Oh, so we've got to sit back and watch her turn her son into a neurotic wreck? Who's too afraid of the world to even go out of the house? It's my opinion that Gemma needs reassurance and support not to have her son taken away. Oh, so what exactly are you basing this opinion on? Have you got children of your own? No. Are you fully qualified? You're not, are you? I finished my final training this year. I should have realised you were too inexperienced. Doesn't mean I'm wrong. You've let Gemma's paranoia infect you as well. Oh, look, this is ridiculous. This is absolutely none of your business. It's between me and my patient. Oh, we'll see about that. Dr Bell, the other thing. Sometimes his arms and legs don't move as well as they used to. Well, you didn't mention anything about mobility problems before. <laughs> no, this is new. While D.I. Moore rounded up the usual suspects, I brought Poole in for questioning. He had no alibi. He'd only been in the interview room a few minutes and he was sweating like a pig. I had him. And he knew it. And that's when he said he wanted to see a doctor. Mr. Poole was a very frightened man. Yeah. Because he was guilty. When I examined him, he had injuries on his torso consistent with him having received a beating. It was only after some persuasion that he revealed to me he'd been punched and kicked by D.S. Halliday. And you took his word for it. Well, the injuries were there for everyone to see. Yeah, and any police surgeon worth his salt would recognise a trick that's as old as the hills. So you're saying that Poole caused the injuries to himself while he was waiting to be interviewed? We've all seen it. Or heard of some scumbag who's tried it on. OK. Why would Poole go to such lengths? Because he was desperate to avoid any more questioning. And you... You granted him his wish and sent him to St Phil's. He could have had internal bleeding. He'd raped a 15-year-old boy. You did your job, I did mine. You lost us vital time. I cannot bend the Hippocratic Oath just to suit the needs of a police investigation. I just needed one more hour with him and I would have had a, I would have had a signed confession. But by the time the hospital staff had discovered he only had superficial injuries, he'd, he'd lawyered up and hasn't said a word since. And that's down to one man. You. I had to treat Poole as just another patient immaterial of what crime he was alleged to have committed. 